Hello, Craig here with another video tutorial on the MFA Multifamily Analyzer Rent Roll Formatter. This is a tool that's intended to be used with the MFA Multifamily Analyzer Advanced Underwriting Model. What this tool does is it formats rent rolls so that I can paste them into my multifamily underwriter and map them effectively. So, as you know, uh, the reason I, I created this model for this tool is that rent rolls come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. They've been the bane of my existence for a long time, and I finally decided to try and build a tool to streamline that process. Uh, what I'll show you are multiple different formats that I've come across and how the tool works to analyze or to summarize them. All right, so for example, this should look pretty common. I've seen this format quite a lot. Uh, it's very difficult to analyze this format because there are multiple rows for every unit represented. There's a lot of blank rows that are merged. So these merged cells are very difficult to analyze, uh, write formulas off of and ex uh, different things. And then you can see rent. It shows up in a different place for each of the units. So here it's at the top. Here it's like the third one down. Uh, it's very difficult to analyze. Uh, here's another multi-row in this one i have two charge codes so the tool what the tool does is if it sees duplicate charge codes it adds those together in its own charge code under this label and then uh, here's another example of a format i've seen here's a, an example this is one of the worst ever as i indicated in my comment <laughs> over here so this one has multiple like merge cells in these sections. It has, if you notice at the top, the columns, it has a lot of blank columns. It's very difficult. <laughs> you cannot analyze this. It takes quite a long time to get this into a format that you can either create a pivot on or put into the underwriting file. Uh, this is another one I think is probably my second least favorite. Uh, the reason for that is it is nice. It's all single row. This is great. The problem with this one is that all these numbers are stored as text. And the way I know this is that I, as I highlight these, they don't add up. They just, they're, they're counting in Excel. But I cannot just take that number plus this number, or I can't generate an average. Similarly, all the dates in this are stored as text. Um, numbers, you see numbers here with an asterisk after it. I can't do anything with that information. I have to remove that asterisk to be able to analyze this, this rent data. I can't, even if I tried to convert everything to a number, that asterisk will prevent it from being included or added in a formula. So really terrible formatting. Um, and then a lot of others that are pretty standard. I will, will say that if you're going to use this tool prior to putting into the advanced analyzer, uh, and mapping in. Uh, there are some fields that uh, I definitely try to make sure are available in the rent roll. So for example, this this one right here has bedroom and bathroom grouped, and that's okay for me. Uh, this one's not too bad. Uh, this, this one has no market rent. So it only has a rent column, but no market rent. And I really like to have a move in and a lease from and a lease expiration. So this has move in and basically a lease expiration, but no lease start date. So that's uh, something I may consider adding. Okay, and moving on, you can see over here, uh, square footage is included in the unit type. I have to have square footage broken out. So uh, you'll see off to the right, I have a formula that looks at this text column and it pulls out the square footage for me. And I prefer this to be a number, so I'd remove the SF on the end. Uh, and just so you know, this formula right here, it looks pretty intimidating. I used ChatGPT. I, I fed it three examples and I said, I want to isolate the very last string after the last space. And it wrote that formula for me. So uh, definitely leverage ChatGPT with your, for your formulas. It's pretty incredible. Okay, let me show you how this works. I'm going to start with a multi line rent roll. So I will copy the rent roll. Uh, it's very important when you use this tool 
at the bottom of a lot of these rent rolls is uh, here, future residents and applications. We don't want this information. This is not a current rent roll. This is looking into the future. I want to know what the property is doing now. If you include this, it's going to duplicate these units. It's going to see this rent twice. So do not include any of the future resident application information. Do not include any of the summary data at the bottom. So what I'll typically do is go to the very bottom and I'll highlight from this very bottom row all the way to the very top like this. And I hold the control key and I click at the top and now I've selected the entire rent roll, active rent roll data. But for our demonstration, I'm just going to copy a small subset of that. I will go into the rent roll formatter and I will paste it into this column for the cell E1. And what it does is it, it does some initial formatting. It removes all merge cells. It sizes all the font to size 8 and uh, Calibri. And then just follow the instructions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? So 1, I pasted it in here. I did not copy and paste the totals or future resident information. So that's good. Um, and then you have to tell the tool whether it's a single rent row or a single row per unit or multiple row. And there is some logic to try and identify this, but it's very difficult to do consistently because of all the additional spacing in these rent rolls. So I do highlight it if the tool thinks that you're selecting the wrong one. So in this case, it's red because I selected single row. I have comments in here. Uh, so I'm selecting multiple row. And then I have four input values to provide to it. I have to input the header row. So this is the row that identifies the header, uh, the column header. So this is, in this case, it's row five. And then I have um, first unit cell. So what cell does the first unit occur in? Sometimes it's immediately below the header. And sometimes it's like four or five rows below. And sometimes it's not even in column E, it's going to be in column G. So very, pay attention where the first unit is. So in this case, it's pretty easy. It's E6. And then charge code. So where is the column that identifies the rent charge code? So in this case, you can see rent is right here. That is my column K. And now what is the rent column? Where is the actual rent amount? So in this case, it's the very next column over. 784, that would be column uh, L. There you go. So now that everything has been, uh, all the parameters have been set, you just click modify rent roll. And there you go. And so just to give you an explanation on what it just did, is it took, a distinct list it looked at this entire column and it created a distinct list and it moved all these values into their own column so you can see that over here starting with pest and everything got its own column that it found and then it moved the corresponding value into this column so now i have my rent column very clearly identified i have the market rent over here uh, i have my move in which is great i have lease expiration uh, I would really like to have a lease start date so my dashboard works. Uh, so what sometimes I'll do is I'll just copy the move-in column and I'll just duplicate it and call it lease start. Uh, and it's it's um, not ideal, but it will ensure that the dashboard works uh, and, I, and I can see the trend of lease rents um, based on this date. Uh, and sometimes I have a lease start, but I don't have a move in, and I'll do the same thing in reverse. And that's pretty much it. This is ready to be copied into the analyzer. Okay, let's do another one. So I'm going to do clear data. And now I will go into this multi rent code, this one right here. So I have duplicate charges. I want to show you what this looks like. Duplicate charges. Actually, I have. Another one that has multiple units as well. It's a duplicate unit. So I will kind of put together an example that has multiple units, multiple charge codes with this. So I'm going to just copy a subset of this information so you can see. I'll place it in so E1. Uh, and you can see that this has two header rows. I'm really focused on the header row that has the most amount of information. So that is row. 
five. Uh, the first unit is now in E8, so I will do E8. And then the charge code column is here in K, and L is the amount. So we're good to go on that one. What I'm going to do, just so you can see, is I'm going to duplicate this unit. I'm going to say 1003 is also in here twice, and I have seen rent rolls that have two rent charges in it, and that's very important to be able to identify. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add another rent charge in here so you can see how the tool handles it. And now let's go ahead and go. Okay, so if the model sees that there are duplicate units, you're going to see this warning and it shows you there are duplicate units, one to be exact, and it highlights the duplicate in yellow above. So now I can go up here and say, well, why is this a duplicate unit? Uh, the reason I see this most often is one unit is rented and then the, the unit is listed again as pending renewal. So oftentimes I'll delete that pending renewal. I'm only interested in what's happening right now. Um, and then the other thing the tool's doing is off to the right, it's highlighting anytime the tool does something with the data. So if it adds the data or if it sees two rent charge codes, it's going to highlight it. And it's going to put a comment. So you can see that this is 35 plus 10. So if I go back and I, the tool does not modify the original rent roll, so I can say, oh, yeah, look at that. There were two charge codes under park, it was 35 and 10. And I can see that for park, it totals 45, which is 35 and 10. And then in the rent column, I highlight this one red, and it picks the last rent amount. That it sees and it puts that into the cell but it will highlight it for you to let you know that there were there was more than one rent amount so in this case if you hover over it was 915 or 1050. if i look at the rent roll i could scroll down and see for this unit right here it is 915 has a rent charge code and 1050. so it captured both of those as I mentioned before, it uses the last one it found, and that's what gets populated in the cell. But if you want, you can always change that with the information that's provided in the comment. Okay, one more rent roll, and we're gonna do a single line rent roll. So this is uh, the one I really hate. We're gonna do this one. So I'm gonna just make sure I highlight uh, just a subset. That's fine. Oh, I forgot to clear the rent roll, so clear it. And now I'll go into the number formats. I'll go to the rent roll formatter. I paste it. Okay, copied over my text box. I don't care about that. So here you go. So I pasted this in here. As I mentioned, these are all stored as text. Uh, I can't do anything with it. You see these have asterisks in here, so I can't really add that up. Uh, so I got to go through the steps. To process this rent roll. So it recognizes that this is a single row for unit. So I need to select that. And once you've selected that, there are only two inputs. What is the header row, which is six? And in this case, the first unit cell is right over here. This is actually in cell G7. I'm going to go ahead and input G7. And then I modify the rent roll. There you go. And now I got a warning. It's telling me that there are duplicate units. It found a duplicate. So I'll go ahead and click OK, and then you can see right here, sure enough, this is a duplicate unit. And there you go, it says pending renewal. So I will go ahead and I will delete that from my rent roll because I already have that unit represented and it's actually the occupied rent that they're receiving. And now I can copy this paste it into my multifamily advanced analyzer and map all the columns. Okay, that is a tutorial of the rent roll formatter. Thank you for watching the video.